Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're looking at AMD's brand new mainstream 8 series processor for high performance, productivity, and gaming laptops, the Ryzen 5 5600H. This new Zen 3 APU is the successor to last year's sleeper hit in the entry level gaming laptop market, the Ryzen 5 4600H, which ended up as one of the most popular options among buyers in the sub $1,000 market. AMD is looking to continue that success in 2021 with the 5600H bringing with it a new level of performance. As we've talked extensively about Zen 3 laptop APUs on the channel previously, I'm going to breeze through this section on specifications. If you're interested in more information, check out our announcement video covering these parts. But the basics you need to know are, the Ryzen 5 5600H is a 6-core, 12-thread processor that uses AMD's new Zen 3 architecture. Compared to last generation parts, Zen 3 brings better IPC, a unified core complex with double the L3 cache, and some mobile-specific optimizations like better battery life and higher clock speeds. The 5600H is the lowest tier CPU AMD currently offer in the Ryzen Mobile 5000 H series, with its 6 cores clocked up to 4.2GHz boost from a 3.3GHz base, slightly higher clock speeds than what we saw with the 4600H. There's also 19MB of total cache, split between 16MB L3 and 3MB L2, plus an integrated Vega GPU with 7 compute units clocked up to 1.8GHz. Today's video doesn't really cover the IG GPU in any significant detail, as the vast majority of Ryzen 5 5600H laptops will also feature a discrete GPU. All of this is built on TSMC's 7nm process node, and the default TDP is 45 watts. As a Ryzen 5 part, we expect to mostly see this CPU used in entry-level to mid-range gaming laptops similar to the previous generation. So think your GTX 1650 Ti systems, GTX 1660 and the new RTX 3060 with higher tier CPUs like the Ryzen 7 5800H typically going into systems with the RTX 3070 and above. AMD doesn't publish SKU pricing for laptop chips, but based on what we've seen from OEMs so far, the 5600H still looks like quite an affordable processor with a set of decent laptops to choose from. Speaking of laptops, for today's testing we went and bought a Lenovo Legion 5 laptop that features the Ryzen 5 5600H. We wouldn't be able to make these sorts of purchases without the help of our Patreon and Floatplane supporters, so if you do want to support our testing that's the best way to do so. Anyway, this laptop was one of the first we saw to use the 5600H with a local price tag of a little over 2000 Australian dollars. Internal hardware aside from the CPU includes 16GB of dual channel DDR4-3200 memory, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 laptop GPU, 512GB SSD, a decent quality 1080p 165Hz IPS display with 100% sRGB coverage, and an internal 80 watt hour battery. Seems like a perfectly fine laptop, but this isn't a laptop review, we are mostly just interested in how that hardware performs. Like all of our H-series laptop coverage, we've tested the Ryzen 5 5600H with its default long-term power limit of 45 watts, which is how the Legion 5 comes configured out of the box in its balanced power profile. This mode features a boost period of 54 watts for several minutes before dropping down to 45 watts in keeping with most other Ryzen H-series laptops we've tested so far. In this mode, the GPU runs at 80 to 95 watts. However, potential buyers of the Legion 5 should also note that there is a performance mode which increases both the CPU and GPU power limits, the CPU up to over 65 watts and the GPU up to 115 to 130 watts. We didn't use this mode for testing to keep things apples to apples with other CPUs we've tested. On top of this, the Legion 5 also supports Nvidia's Advanced Optimus, however for our CPU limited game testing we opted to disable this and run the GPU always through Optimus to again give us comparable data with other systems we've tested. Kicking off our benchmark data with Cinebench R20 and the Ryzen 5 5600H does provide us with a healthy performance gain over the previous gen 4600H. In this multi-threaded test, the 5600H is 16% faster, which is quite good for a year-on-year -year improvement. This allows the 5600H to sneak ahead of the Core i9-10980HK running at 45 watts, while beating the Core i7-10870H by 21% and the 6-core Core i7-10750H by 47%. While the gap to the 4800H has closed with this new 6-core design, the 5600H still ends up around 20% behind the 5800H, just in case you were wondering if an upgrade to the Ryzen 7 part is worth it.
One of the big areas of improvement for Ryzen 5000 is in single thread performance. The 5600H only clocks up to 4.2 GHz, so it isn't as chart topping here as the Ryzen 9 5980HS. However, it still manages a 20% performance increase over the 4600H, and it falls just 4% behind the slightly higher clocked 5800H. Intel's 10th gen parts can't keep up, although the Tiger Lake Core i7 11370H with its 4.8GHz turbo is roughly 10% faster, so there will be quite a battle when Intel's Tiger Lake H45 processors are ready for market. Here are the Cinebench R23 results, which fall into a similar pattern as Cinebench R20. In case you were wondering, it takes a Core i9-10980HK running at approximately 65 watts to match the Ryzen 5 5600H running at 45 watts, and for the Core i7-10870H you need to double its stock PL1, so in terms of efficiency the 5600H is noticeably superior, and this allows it to run at these high performance levels in slimmer, quieter systems with less substantial coolers. In handbrake, the Ryzen 5 5600H and Core i9-10980HK deliver roughly equivalent performance, so it's impressive that AMD's entry-level processor is as good in this multi-threaded workload as Intel's previous generation flagship CPU. This is down to a modest 9% performance improvement moving from the 4600H to the 5600H. Blender delivers basically the same results as Handbrake with these new Ryzen 5000 processors. The 5600H is 8% faster than the 4600H, and that allows it to offer equivalent performance to Intel's 10980HK. This makes it significantly faster than the Core i7-10750H as an example. We're looking at 40% more performance from the Ryzen 5 processor. For code compilation, Ryzen 5000 processors are an excellent choice from the top of the stack to the bottom. The Ryzen 5 5600H delivers 13% better performance in this GCC compilation than the 4600H, making it faster than all Intel 10th gen designs, and thanks to superior lightly threaded performance, a bit faster than even the 4800H. In the longer Chromium compilation, the 5600H delivers about the same performance as Intel's Core i7-10870H, and just a 6% gain on the 4600H. Still a good result compared to the competition, but not as solid as some of the other benchmarks we've been looking at. MATLAB used to be the nemesis of AMD laptop APUs, but that's no longer the case with the Ryzen 5 5600H, which increases performance by a decent 10% in this benchmark compared to the 4600H. This allows it to sit in the range of Intel's 8-core Core i7 parts, and faster than the 6-core i7-10750H. Microsoft Excel gets an 8% performance increase going from the R5 4600H to the R5 5600H, but ultimately this is one of the weaker results for this processor, only matching the 10750H here. The 5600H therefore ends up 23% slower than the 5800H in this workload. In PC Mark 10's Applications Test, which measures Microsoft Office and Edge web browsing performance, the 5600H benefits significantly from increased single-thread performance. This new Zen 3 part is 24% faster than the 4600H that came before it, which allows it to compete much more strongly with Intel's 10th and 11th generation processors. In 7-zip compression, we do see a gen-on-gen -gen performance improvement. The 5600H is 17% faster than the 4600H, which is a pretty solid result, all things considered. However, when compared to Intel processors, this only allows the 5600H to roughly match the 10750H, whereas AMD's 8-core designs like the 5800H are able to pull more significantly ahead. But in decompression, Ryzen really is a dominant chip. The 5600H is still 16% faster than the 4600H, so very close to what we saw in compression, but this speed bump allows the 5600H to match the 10980HK and pull well ahead of the 10750H. So like we've seen with Ryzen 7 parts over the last 18 months, decompression is best on an AMD CPU. Acrobat PDF exporting is another good single-threaded benchmark for laptops, and once again the new Zen 3 design is hugely faster than Zen 2. The 5600H is 25% faster than the 4600H in this workload. This allows it to slightly outperform parts like the Core i7-10870H, which run up to 5GHz, despite a significant clock speed deficit. However, the newer 11370H with its Willow Cove CPU core design is faster again. With weaker single-thread performance, Ryzen 4000 processors weren't well suited to Adobe Photoshop, but that's not the case with the 5600H. This mainstream processor is marginally faster in this workload than Intel's Core i7 processors, and while it doesn't have the same levels of performance as the Ryzen 7 range, it's still quite a competitive part for photo editing in this popular tool.
DaVinci Resolve Studio is where we begin to get some GPU heavy applications. Nestled in the middle of this graph is where you'll find the Ryzen 5 5600H, an RTX 3060 laptop 80 watt GPU configuration. And honestly, this is a pretty solid result for a mainstream laptop. This system is as good as a Core i7-10870H laptop with the same GPU inside, which typically is a more expensive sort of setup. Outside of that, you really need more GPU horsepower to get faster results in this benchmark from Puget Systems. In Adobe Premiere, using the Puget Systems export test, we see quite similar results to DaVinci Resolve. The Ryzen 5 5600H is slightly behind the Core i7-10870H laptop with the same GPU inside, so not a bad result given the core count discrepancy, and this is a workload that uses hardware accelerated video encoding. Then in After Effects, this combination of a Ryzen 5 5600H and RTX 3060 laptop GPU is quite competitive, with what I'd class as high-end laptops. It seems the Zen 3 IPC improvements give Ryzen a handy performance boost in this sort of application. Looking at head-to-head -head comparisons, it's clear that the Ryzen 5 5600H is providing a decent gen-on-gen -gen performance increase over AMD's prior 6-core CPU, the Ryzen 5 4600H. This is in the ballpark of what we saw previously comparing the 5800H to the 4800H, if a little better in some applications. Generally, we are seeing a modest 5-15% to gain in multi-threaded workloads, while single-threaded gains are more impressive in the 20% region or more. There is still a substantial gap to the next highest processor in AMD's lineup though, the Ryzen 7 5800H. The 5600H performs well in a lot of workloads, but still ends up 20% slower than the 5800H at the same power level, as the 5800H packs two more cores, and generally what we've seen is that higher core count designs are much more efficient in power-constrained laptop form factors. Compared to Intel processors, the Ryzen 5 5600H is quite a bit faster than the Core i7-10750H for the most part. Now there are some workloads where the two parts are almost equal, but mostly the Ryzen part is faster. Then as we move up Intel's 10th gen stack to something like the 10870H, in a lot of cases the Ryzen 5 part is still quite a bit faster, but there are also some workloads where the Ryzen part is slower, so it does depend a bit on the application. Given that we don't have 11th gen Tiger Lake H45 processors yet and they are expected to launch soon, I wouldn't be reading too much into the 10th gen results for now. Here's a quick look at how the 5600H compares to the quad core i7-11370H, and like I said in the review of that part, while Intel does deliver impressive single threaded performance with Tiger Lake, the 11370H really is more like a Core i3 processor given how easily it's beaten by the 5600H in most multi-threaded applications. Now it's time for some gaming results. Generally speaking, when looking at the Ryzen 5 5600H's gaming performance with the RTX 3060, I saw one of three things, so let's work through them. The first is that in CPU limited titles, the Ryzen 5 5600H performs okay, but not amazingly. In Hitman 3's Dartmoor benchmark, for example, the 5600H with the RTX 3060 is a little bit faster than a last generation 4800H system with the RTX 2060, and about 8% slower than a Core i7-10870H configuration. This is a lot better than having a low-end quad core like Intel's Core i7-11370H, and it would have been nice to have a 10750H system in here too for comparison, but at the end of the day this is to be expected, as the 5600H doesn't always beat a part like the 10870H, even in productivity tests. Here's another example of similar behavior in Death Stranding, which is also reasonably CPU demanding at 1080p. Again, 5600H with the RTX 2060 is a bit faster than our last gen 4800H plus 2060 configuration, but about 6% behind the Core i7-10870H that uses the same GPU configuration. The second sort of performance results we saw were equivalent performance when comparing the Ryzen 5 5600H and i7-10870H. This seems to occur in some titles that are CPU demanding, and some titles that are heavy on the GPU more than the CPU. One example that we're looking at here is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The 5600H does a decent job in this title. Another example is Borderlands 3, a title we generally associate with being CPU demanding, yet the Ryzen 5 5600H holds its own against the Core i7-10870H when both systems are configured with the same GPU. So that's a promising result given that Ryzen 5 laptops are typically cheaper than Core i7 laptops, especially those with the 10870H inside. CSGO running low settings is a nice third example here, it doesn't really matter what GPU you have when playing this title, as you'll likely be CPU bound, and once again the Ryzen 5 5600H performs quite well. The third sort of performance we saw were actually a number of situations where the Ryzen 5 5600H configuration was faster than the Intel Core i7-10870H running the same RTX 3060 GPU. 
At times, like in Control as one example, it seems the efficiency of the 5600H comes into play with NVIDIA's Dynamic Boost, allowing the RTX 3060 to more frequently hit the 95 watt ceiling in this configuration with the Ryzen CPU running at reduced power. In comparison, the 10870H isn't as able to run at lower power levels without losing performance, and so the GPU sits more around 85 watts. Now, this isn't always the case, but it did seem to happen a few times in some of the games that we tested comparing these Ryzen and Intel systems. In gaming, the comparisons we have right now aren't amazing, but this should give you an idea of how the Ryzen 5 5600H stacks up in comparison to the Core i7 10870H when using the same GPU, which is a high tier part on the Intel side, but overall both configurations do trade blows. The real test will be putting the 5600H up against a Tiger Lake H45 chip in the coming months. Overall, the Ryzen 5 5600H is another impressive Ryzen Mobile 5000 processor. Like the other chips in the lineup that we've reviewed so far, the 5600H isn't the same revolutionary step that AMD introduced last year, but it does present a nice iteration forward that brings with it better performance in most areas. Compared to its direct predecessor, the Ryzen 5 4600H, the 5600H is roughly 10-15% to faster in multi-threaded workloads and upwards of 20% faster in single-threaded tests, which is a respectable gain for a mainstream laptop processor. And this is achieved at the same power levels, which combined with enhancements to power gating and idle power makes this new generation more efficient than before. AMD are continuing to address weaknesses in their processors, and the single-threaded gains in particular are a huge part of that this generation. In AMD's lineup, the 5600H is well positioned for budget-friendly laptop builds in the entry level and mid-range of the market. Our gaming results seem to show that it's quite capable of handling a GPU like the RTX 3060, and there's plenty of performance on offer for productivity, especially if you're upgrading from any prior Intel-based laptop. At the same time, there's still a sizable performance gap to the Ryzen 7 5800H, which may make upgrading one tier higher worth it, depending on the price of the laptop configurations you're looking at. I could spend a long time in this conclusion breaking down how the 5600H competes against Intel's current offerings, but it doesn't really feel worth it given Tiger Lake H45 processors are likely just around the corner. So whatever I say in this review will probably be outdated in less than a month on that front. All that's really worth saying is AMD look well positioned to battle new processors from Intel, given the 5600H is at worst quite competitive in gaming with high tier processors, and in the best cases outperforms even Intel's flagship Core i9-10980HK in some productivity workloads. Obviously, if you were going to be deciding between 10th gen and a 5600H, I'd go with the 5600H in most instances, but soon we will have more options to choose from. Right now, the main challenges facing AMD in the market aren't really related to performance, but instead their platform. Supply constraints are still impacting AMD's ability to flood the market with Ryzen Mobile 5000 APUs, and there's no clarity on when that will subside. So for the time being, it may be somewhat difficult to obtain a 5600H laptop. On top of that, the reality is simply that Intel is used in more OEM designs, so there may be a feature on an Intel system, like Thunderbolt as one example, that just isn't available on an AMD machine. The good news is we are seeing higher tier GPUs used in AMD laptops this generation, however there's still a fair bit of work to be done and it won't get any easier when Intel increases their competitiveness in performance. So that's it for our performance testing of the Ryzen 5 5600H. Next up for us is probably going to be Intel's Tiger Lake H45 processors, so we will get a nice Intel versus AMD system battle thing sort of happening in the laptop market very shortly, I would imagine. If you are interested in supporting our laptop testing, you can sign up to our Patreon or Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. If you sign up something like Floatplane, you will get early access to some of our videos, and you'll allow us to buy things like the Lenovo Legion 5 that we used for today's review. Anyway, I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching to the end. Hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.